Zambia, wherever you are in the world. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Good evening, good morning, good night. The day is here, the time we have been waiting for. We have our special guest, Honorable Thompson Kunda, is live with me today. And uh, we're going to be talking. Sorry, let me just mute my other. OK, sorry about that. Yes, so welcome, guys. Uh, the day is here. We've been waiting to uh, get an official introduction of who Honorable Thompson Kunda is. And today he's here. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome. I cannot hear you. Can you, uh, the sound, sound check, sound check. Okay. Hello. Are you able to hear me? Sound check, sound check. Is perfect. Someone is telling me that the sound is okay. I don't know about you. Hello. Are you able to hear me? Hello, mom. Sound check, sound check. Yes, are you able to hear me, ma'am? Can you hear Hello? me, Honorable? I'm able to hear you, ma'am. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, ma'am. We are live. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm able to hear you. Okay. The audience, guys, can you hear us? Can you hear Someone? Oh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> yes, so welcome. Uh, let's share the video. Perfect. So we are good. They can hear us. So that's lovely. That's lovely. So because of a connection and sound, when I speak, give it a few minutes before you respond because of the transmission. All right, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. So now I just want people to come in and uh, we can just... Uh, So now we can just have a few minutes and share the video and we wait for everybody to join in. So we can just share guys, share the video while we wait everyone to come in and we'll be start getting started soon.
Okay, well, Honorable, I think we can get started. So welcome everybody. Uh, today is a special day we've been waiting for. I'm here with Honorable Thompson. My name is Pumulo Stumbeko or Queen Pumi. I'm here, I'm based in the United States. And uh, if you don't know me, I am a political advocate as well as, um, you know, uh, as, well as a certified uh, human rights uh, consultant. Uh, I work uh, with Honorable Matomola and as well as Honorable Thompson to bring uh, information, share information as we head into the general election in, uh, on August 12th. So, uh, Honorable Thompson, the floor is yours. Can you just introduce yourself to, to the world? The platform is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, my, my names are Kunda Thompson. I was born uh, in 1977 here in Mukushi. I have lived all my 44 years just here in Mukushi. I've never stayed in any other place apart from Mukushi. And uh, I am a teacher by profession, a primary school teacher. At the same time, I am a politician. I am not only a politician, I am also a teacher of financial literacy, which we call the investor lessons. So a bit of my political background, I started uh, politics in 2001 as a member of FDD, Forum for Democracy. I was uh, the district publicity and information secretary up to 2006. 2006, I joined UPND because FDD, UNIP, and uh, UPND worked together in an, in a, an alliance. So after the 2006 election, I joined UPND. Immediately, I was given the position of district vice chairperson for Mkushi. After a year, I was elevated to the position of district chairman for UPND. That was in 2007. From 2007 to 2011, I was the district chairman for UPND in Mukushi. Then in 2011, before the general election, something didn't go well with the pact between UPND and the PF. So just because of what happened, I found myself in PF and I stood as a counselor on PF ticket in Ichiwefwe Ward, where I live even today. So I became a counselor from 2011 up to 20, 2016, but midway, in uh, 2013, somewhere there, I became the mayor 
or the council chairman for Mukushi District Council. At the same time, I was also elected as district secretary for PF in Mukushi. Then uh, in 2014, after the death of President Sata, PF was supposed to have a convention in Kawe. So that time, actually, Mr. Mao Sampa was also vying for this position of uh, presidency. He came to Mukushi, and when he came to Mukushi, he bumped into, into, into me, and he discovered that uh, I have got a voice to speak to the people. So Mr. Mao Sampa made me his campaign manager. So when we went for the convention, unfortunately the convention, I can say it was not there because no one voted for whoever was voted for. So President Lungu was uh, made president of PF. And just because I campaigned for Mao Sampa, that's how a lot of big people in the PF came to, I mean, not to like me. So just because of that, I saw myself out of PF in 2016, and I decided to go back to my party, UPND. So from 2016, I have been UPND until now. So that is a bit of my political background. So that is really tops on Kunda. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, wow, that's very interesting. Very interesting political career. So Thank where you. do you see yourself politically in the next five years in your political career? Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, to me, politics is a service. And uh, to be very much uh, ambitious in politics, to me, it's not good. Because you can find yourself by forcing yourself to become what you want to become in five years. You can find yourself in a position that God has not ordained for you. And it brings trouble. So all I can say is that in the next five years, I can see myself as a member of parliament from Koshi North in the UPND led government. That I'm very much assured. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank you very much. So, you know, a lot is happening. You know, the political scene is hot right there in Zambia. We are ready to go campaigning full force. Can I just have a few comments regarding the political scene? Currently, the political scene, to be specific on the defections, what's your comment on the defections, on the political arrests? Uh, the tribalism and also the fuel shortages. What is your comment? Thank you so much, ma'am. Maybe before I talk about, maybe before I talk about uh, uh, tribalism, shortage of fuel, and the defections, I would love to say something concerning what is prevailing on the ground in Zambia politically. Actually, I am taken back to 2011, 2010, and 2009, before the general election. I have discovered that MMD was more strong when it was the ruling party than the PF today, as it is the ruling party. MMD was very much strong. I was PF by that time because in 2011, that's the time I, 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 I defected from UPND to PF. 
and I can tell you that it was not it was it, it wasn't easy for PF to grab power through an election from MMD because MMD was very strong. Reason being, the economy was sound when MMD was in power. So we didn't have, as patriotic front, we didn't have what to tell the people. The only thing, the only thing we used to tell or to talk about whenever we met the people, the voters, before the general election was that we wanted to put more money in their pockets. And to the working class, we promised them that we were going to lower the taxes. So people trusted us just on those two things. We never told them that we would build roads for them. They didn't vote for SATA and the PF because we promised them the roads, no. They voted for PF because we promised them that they will have a lot of money in their pockets and people were excited. The working class also were excited because we told them that the patriotic front in government would lower the taxes. So those are the two things that made the PF to win an election. Unfortunately, this time around, ma'am, this time around, those things which PF promised the people is the opposite of what is happening today. People doesn't have that lots of money which we promised them to be in their pockets. There is no money in the pockets of people, meaning that we lied to the people. Again, to those who are in the civil service, the teachers, the nurses, the policemen, the soldiers, we told them that we would bring down the taxes. And that has not happened. Actually, the taxes has gone up. So what people are experiencing today is the opposite of what we promised them when I was in the PF. Now, are you able to hear me, ma'am? Yes, I can hear you. I'm following. Keep... OK. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So now what it is, I'm saying this time it is easy in a, in a, in a general election to remove PF because MMD was strong than what PF is today. The economy of that time when MMD was in power was much, much stronger than the economy of today. And today, actually in UPND, we are very much excited because we are not even raising the voices when campaigning or talking about the 48 houses or talking about corruption, those things. We are not even talking about those things. We are just telling people to compare how they were when MMD was in power and how they are today. And we are telling them to check their pockets to see if that money which the Patriot Front government promised if it is there in their pockets, unfortunately, that money is not in the pockets of our people. On the other hand, those in the civil service, it's terrible. They are crying because taxes, taxes are all over. The, 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 the living standards of our people have gone down. Almost everyone is complaining except those that are in big positions. So the campaigns for, for the opposition, especially the UPND, it is easy because we are not actually campaigning. The hardships which people are 
in is what is campaigning for Akainde Ichilema. So this one, this election, Mama, is exciting to the opposition, specifically UPND. But at the same time, it is giving sleepless nights to our colleagues in the patriotic front because they don't know what the judges, I mean, the people of Zambia will do to them on 12 August because the voters on 12 August will stand as judges to judge the patriotic front, not Akainde Ichilema, no. They are not judging Akainde Ichilema on 12 August. They are judging the patriotic front to see if they've done what they promised concerning more money in people's pockets and the issue of lowering the taxes. So this thing is giving our friends sleepless nights. And what do they do now because they know time is ticking, Mama? Now they are inducing people to defect. And these people who are defecting, you need to look at them. Who are they? What have they done? They are defecting from which political party to which political party? What is the reason or the motives for their, for their defections? You discover that a week ago or so, someone by the name of, I don't know if it is Mr. Kakoma or whatever, it was something like spokesperson for UPND. I have been in, you are following ma'am? Yes, I'm listening. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You are live. Everything is good. <laughs> we are watching. We have a lot of people online. There are a lot of people have logged on. So guys, share the video. Uh, top Honorable Topson is live and telling us important information, guys. Share the video, like and follow uh, Honorable Topson. Uh, follow Honorable Matomola. This is just the beginning. We are going to have more discussions of uh, of this nature. Thank you, ma'am. I can continue? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So now, Honorable Kakoma. I don't know if he's Honorable Charles Kakoma because I don't know him. I have been in UPND for many years. And you have a party spokesperson who has never reached Mukushi. The party structure in Mukushi doesn't know him. And this is the person, when the party went for a, for a Congress, he wanted a promotion. Mm -hmm. And he's not known even in Kapiri. Mm. He's just a spokesperson in Lusaka. Talking about things that are happening concerning UPND, just in Lusaka, not across the country. And now the general populace want UPND to form government. And this person want a promotion. Mm -hmm. Where? How? Because I'm even better than him because I can go on the ground and campaign for HH. So now this is a person when he is not given the position which he, he wanted, uh -huh. he goes to PF. I mean, he's a god digger, you know. In the street like language, that. they call them god diggers. <laughs> something that, like that, ma'am. And again, there is this other, before I talk about our colleagues in the PF. There is this other member of parliament. Is it Balem or what? 
Yeah, I don't know. Belamo or something. The guy from. Uh... Now, 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 look here, ma'am. Hey. I am Topson Kunda. Yes. I, I don't have a position, any position in UPND. But, but you are able to, to know me in America. You are in America. Yes. And here is a, a, a member of parliament who is not even known by the people of Mukushi and Kapiri and Serenji. Imagine. Because that name of Baremu or Baramu, I just said it. Was it yesterday or the other day? Me too. I Me knew, too. I never knew we had a, a member of parliament in UPND by that name. Mm. So I don't know where his is, is, is relevance was in UPND. Attention seeker, my son, attention seeker. Me here, I am my son. I am, I am campaigning. I'm not even looking for any office. I just want change. Yes. So now this is the member of parliament now. When actually what is happening today in Zambia concerning our big party, UPND, we are having primary elections concerning the adoptions. So now, young people, young, young ladies, young men are hot in UPND. They have applied as members of parliament, as mayors and council chairpersons. And here is an incumbent who has done nothing in his constituents. Mm -hmm. And the biggest constituents is Zambia. Mm -hmm. Because when you are elected as member of parliament, you are not only a member of parliament for your constituents. Mm -hmm. You are a member of parliament for the biggest constituents, which is Zambia. And this member of parliament is not known by the people of Mukush because he was representing everyone in Zambia. And now he sees that the young ladies who, are, who have also applied, the young men who have also applied for the same position in that consequence where he is, he discovers that they are more loved like, than him. So what does he do? He jumps, he goes to PF because PF is not sleeping. They promised people more money in their pockets, and they've never done that. They've not done that. So they want people, whether this one is cruelest, whether someone has got brains, political brains, leadership brains, they don't care. They can receive anyone for as long as he's got whatever. So, I mean, those, that member of parliament knew that his relevance was, was diminishing in new PNG because we have a lot of young men, young women with leadership brains, ma'am. This time around. Viva youth. <laughs> Viva <thank> youth. You. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can I say something, ma'am? Can I say something? Yes, please. This election is different from all previous elections. Because the 2015 general election and the 2016 general election People voted for PF because of what they were pointing at. So on top of our own. But this election is different because people are not going to vote for someone because of what they've done, not because of the roads, because the roads are relevant to the life of a common man in Shawama when that person doesn't have food at home. Mm -hmm. 
So this time around, people are not voting for this one because of what they've done. They will vote for this one because of what this one can do. And that one who can do better is Aka in the Ichirem. I was in Lusaka two weeks ago. I went for verifications of my results. I, 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 I jumped into this taxi. The boy who was driving the taxi is something like 19, 20 years old. Then this boy said, PF has made the biggest mistake by shutting the mouths of people because MMD didn't do that. So MMD allowed people to talk freely, to campaign freely, speak freely, and MMD used to get the views of the people who were in problems. Unfortunately, this is what this boy was saying. He was telling me now. The boy was saying, the problem with PF, they've got the mouths of people so that people cannot speak, and yet they are eight inside. People are hate inside by the harsh economy. And yet P PF doesn't know that people are hate because they have not allowed them to speak. So what you will see on 12 August, ma'am, will shock someone. Because people will speak on the ballot. People speak on the ballot. So if PF had allowed our people to speak freely, they would have gotten the troubles that people are going through. But they have dug ditches for themselves for not allowing people to express themselves. Because when, if you are a good leader, if you allow people to speak freely, you get their concerns and you work on their concerns. But if you cannot allow them to speak, you will think they are okay. You will think they are enjoying and yet nabakupingila. So now, let me talk about uh, let me talk a bit about Aka Inde Ichilema. Aka Inde Ichilema, PF has made a big mistake on Aka Inde Ichilema. And because I don't know who is advising who in PF, they've not sensed to this one. Because even me, a village boy, if they approached me for advice, I could have given them proper advice for them to win an election. But I doubt the reasoning of their advisors. They've stopped HH from campaigning. They cannot allow HH to go freely on the streets, even to come to Mukushi to come and campaign. Now, if you remember, Ma, when you mm -hmm. was in Zambia, those days when you was young. Mm -hmm. Kwaleva ma traditional weddings. Na winga bale mufisa even two weeks before the wedding, even a month mm -hmm. before the wedding. Do you know the reason why? Tell us. They, they wanted the husband to be to develop much appetite for the wife to be. <laughs> They wanted, they wanted this man who loves this woman to miss the wife to be. So that when you see her on that day, the wedding day, she'll be like an angel to you. Amen. <laughs> you, you love her more than you loved her when you was in courtship. 
Yes. So now what PF has done, they have taken this bright Nawinga HH into hiding so that us, the voters, the husband to be, can have much appetite for him. And they've made a mistake, ma'am. Mm -hmm. They've allowed our beloved president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, to be moving everywhere, every time. <laughs> so I want to know about the because when you see even your wife to be on a daily basis, you start <laughs> seeing the nose to be big. <laughs> you, you, you even see that maybe the, the smile of your wife to be is not a good one because you are with her on a daily basis. So PF thought that by stopping HH from moving will make people to forget about HH, not knowing that they are creating more hunger and appetite in the lives of voters for Haka in the I wish I was a party advisor for PF. So now, what will happen, ma'am, mm -hmm. is it, what will happen on 12 August is what happened in 20, in, in 1991. In 1991, ma'am, Frederick Chiluba had no money for campaigns. So in places like Kapiri, Mukushi, Serenje, and those other places, I'm talking about the places I know because I've lived all my 44 years in Mukushi. <laughs> People voted for a person they didn't know. Chiluba never came to Mukushi in 1991. Wow. They, people were just hearing that the one who is standing as president is short. He's mm. not a tall man. Mm. They never saw him on picture or on TV. There was mm. no TV in Mukushi. Wow. So they voted for a person they didn't know. So each time, each time our, our parents met a short man, they mm -hmm. thought it was Kiruba. Wow. So they were just asking, are you watching what? <laughs> so in Real talk, real talk. People voted for a person they didn't know. Mm -hmm. Because there was thirsty and hunger for this man whom our people never saw. But they just heard about him. And this is what is happening in the lives of Zambians who are missing HH. So now, since I'm UPND, my advice to PF is continue stopping HH from moving so that the thirsty, the love for this bride, bride. <laughs> and people will be excited to see this bright god hh so, the best you can do, allow HH to be moving freely. Otherwise, you will cry. You will cry. And Mama, on the issue of fuel, do you want me to talk about it? Or, or talk about that issue? Yes, we are here. Oh. <laughs> it's up to you. You talk about fuel, and also you can talk about this issue of uh, 
over the radio stations where the tags, if, if, a, if a new opposition announced that they want to go to, uh, to make a, a radio program, the radio station is attacked by the PF cutters or you know, power is cut off. So fuel, the radio stations and also the pandemic. I know we don't talk about COVID much, but it's a problem. Yesterday, I just lost one of my neighbors right there in Indola. They passed away from COVID and their child brought the, the virus home from school. So guys, we have to be aware about this pandemic. It's real and uh, yeah, so it's up to you, the Honorable. Today is your day. Talk about whatever you feel like uh, talking about. We are here to learn from you. Thank you so much. So in, 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 my, in my discourse, I'll be, even, I'll be advising PF. You've talked about stopping the opposition from campaigning on the radio stations or on air. That's a very big mistake, ma'am. I told you, ma'am, that I was UPND before 2011 general election. MMD made me to hate President Sata because of what they were saying about him. The pictures which they, had, they were putting on the TV, we didn't know that there is this issue of uh, how do you call it, Blessed? Editing? We didn't know that time that there was editing in Zambia. So Sata was on a color TV. The color of President Sata before he became president was dark black. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you have seen that color, dark black. Of course, I am. I, I know, yes. I've been warned. Don't be. Don't be funny. They have warned me to stop laughing, so I'll try to be serious. <laughs> me, I'm a politician. I joke a lot. <laughs> they are telling me to stop laughing, so I'm now I will try to be serious. Okay, my honorable, we are listening. Thank you so much. So MMD painted Sata dark black. And I hated Sata because they told people that Sata would cut the breasts of old women. And people were afraid. They said Sata was a bad guy. They said Sata was going to bring homosexuality in Zambia. Now, one day I happened to be with President Sata in, actually, I was together with President HH in 2009 in Chitambo constituency. So that day we were together. Sata and Aka in the If President HH is listening to our discussion, he can agree with me. That was 2009. So the whole day we were together in Ichitambo. Then the following day, there was news in the paper where MMD talked about Sata on things that he never did. On that day, we were together. So when I when I when I, I I listened to that, I said, ah, yesterday I was with Sat, and he never said this. Now, why is it that ZNBC and Daily Mail and Times of Zambia have talked about Sata in a different way? Then I said, hmm, is the news I receive on ZNBC correct concerning Sata? That very day, I changed my perception about Sata. MMD made me to love Sata because of their hate for him. This is what has happened today in Zambia. PF have tried to paint Aka Inde Ichlema, blue, black, Meluni, whatever car, thinking that Zambians will hate Mr. Ichlema. 
and yet they have seen that HH, HH is not what they say. And people have come to love Akainde Ichile. But they don't know. They don't know. What MMD saw when we voted in 2011, the shock that they, they received that day is the shock that PF will receive after painting HH dark blue and dark black. Then on the issue of blocking people from appearing on, uh, on radio, PF doesn't know that it is working against them because people are thirst for us, the UPND. They want to hear our voices. It's like this husband-to-be want to hear the voice of this bride who have been hidden somewhere. So after the solution of parliament, when we'll be allowed to talk freely, hmm, Zambians will yearn for our voices. <laughs> Zambians will... To yearn to Frederick Chiluba, to for the, the person they never saw. Ah, this is what is going to happen on 12 August. Then on the issue of cadres having powers more than more than police officers, that is not good. How can a cadre enter into a police station and? do whatever they want to do. A thing which never happened when Kaunda was in power for 27 years. A thing which never happened when Ichiluba was in power for 10 years. A thing which never happened in Mwanawasa's time. A thing which never happened in Lupia Banda's time and in Sata's time. But now we are seeing it today. Do you think Zambians are happy? Do you think Zambians are happy? Zambians are hit. Zambians are hit. And if I was the advisor, the advisor to the to my beloved president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, I can tell those cadres to go to their farms and become farmers than allowing them to do what they are doing because they are not damaging their names. They are damaging the name of our leader and people are upset. I have a question, Honorable. Yes, ma'am. So on the cadres, uh, somebody sent me a voicemail that, uh, a voice note that you know what, in the constitution of the yes. PF, it is stated yeah. clearly that cadres will run the country. They will be in charge of everything. So mm -hmm. can you comment on that? Because it's a, that voice note say that whatever is happening in Zambia now, whatever the, the cadres are doing, they are backed by their constitution. So PF in their constitution, they are saying, they have signed, they are agreeing. So it's part of their, part of their goal is to oppress people and make uh, cadres in charge of everything, inclu including police stations. I have not seen the PF constitution myself. So that's why I'm asking if you have seen it or if you know anything about that. Can you allow me to defend PF on that one? Mm -hmm. I, I have, I, I was district secretary for PF. I had the PF constitution and all the documents that had the, the policies of PF. There was nothing like that. The only thing which was there, maybe other people have tried to misinterpret is that PF wanted to be a pro-poor government, meaning 
They wanted the poor people to rule themselves, not cadres, not cadres, no. So if there is a document that is stating that cadres should do rule, uh -uh, then that one is, is not known to me. It, it wasn't part of PF when I was PF. I would have not joined PF if it was like that. There is no way, there is no way a card that can tell a police officer, a traffic officer, to say, Fumenia Pamle Nunca uniform, Nunca. No, that is wrong. That is wrong for my brothers if it is happening with their cadres. The person that they are dating is not that minister from Undola. The person they are dating is not that provincial chairman in Lusaka. It is the name of our beloved president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalung. They are denting him, but he's a busy man. He's a busy man. Sometimes he might not know that that is what the cadres are doing to him. They are destroying his name, and yet an election is coming. So to those, I know a lot of people are following us. To those people who are too close to our beloved president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalung, Vajita <laughs> Sila, advise our president to do away with cardalism because it may affect him badly. That thing is not helping him at all. Because do you know what people are saying on the ground? People are saying, if these cadres are going to be allowed to continue doing what they are doing, maybe in the future, they may be coming to our, our homes and start raping our girls, our children, and our parents. And maybe, I'm, I'm saying maybe, the police will, will just be watching. This is what people are saying on the ground. So that is the fear in the people <clears throat> that will vote on 12 August. Because cadres have been given too much power. And uh, President Lungu's people on the ground, the people that he is governing, including myself, people are worried because they don't know what will happen after 12 August if PF forms government again. People are saying, maybe cadres, I'm saying maybe, maybe cadres who start coming into our homes and start raping our, our children and our wives when we are, we are watching and people are afraid. And that should make our president to realize that that thing which cadres are doing and perpetuating is not good for, for his re-election. It's not good at all. It may cause him to lose an election. So the best thing he can do is to disband those. Where? Yes, ma. Yes, my my son. So I have experiences to Alishide Kulusaka 2019 in Parker Intercity. We went to Intercity to get a bus. They attacked me and my children, Amakadas. Just because yes, they just saw the suitcases and the tags, they attacked us like a mob of 100 people. We were so scared until one guy came to rescue me. That was in 2019. This Kadarism, so imagine, imagine. So they will be coming to their homes. They are already doing it. Even they are attacking young girls. They unleash on you. I experienced ma, it. You can yes, continue. Ma, that is wrong. We are called a Christian nation. And if we are called a Christian nation, then you allow cadres to be beating women on the streets. 
yesterday, if you heard me correctly, I said sometimes as human beings, you can try to do what will look good in your eyes, but that could not be the will of God. So now, what it is, Mama, Zambia is a Christian nation. It doesn't matter how someone looks at it. But the truth is that a lot of believers in Zambia are praying. I am one of those people who are praying. And I believe in God that he answers prayers. And one thing that I believe in is that, actually, it is even in the Bible. The Bible says, many are the plans of a man, but, but the purpose of God prevails. So PF can have good plans for their re-election in August in whichever way they want to conduct themselves. Maybe by allowing cadres to be beating people, intimidating people, abducting people if that thing is happening, not allowing HH to move freely, not allowing us to be moving freely. I've been caught twice in a month by the police. Do you think people love Topson Kunda who vote for President Lungu? By uh, allowing PF cadres, instructing police officers to uh, arrest this son of the soil, Topson Kunda. <laughs> Ma, I, I love people. I love people. And what people do, they reciprocate. They love me in Mukush. That is the truth. So when you arrest me, you have not arrested only Topson. You have arrested everyone who loves this boy, this poor person, Topson. And we love you too. We love you too. That's why we are here. You can see all the people watching. <laughs> Thank you so much. So those are some of the mistakes which PF is making and they are decampaigning themselves. Ma'am, it's like we have, we have hammered one now. You want me to finish everything, everything I know about PF? Uh, so I think, no, well, let's leave the rest. We'll make a date. We'll send another notice out. So you can just wind up in five minutes. We'll continue. We'll continue this. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. So now let me take this opportunity. You see, I am a child of God. I'm a believer. If my friends are going into the ditch, if I fail to warn, warn them, then I have a case before the throne of God. At the same time, I am UPND. I should campaign for Aka in the Ichilem. So my brotherly warning to PF or caution to PF is that they should be careful with, with what they are doing. Number one, no wonder I said I shouldn't even talk about fuel. Because a lot of Zambians doesn't have cars. So they don't know when you talk about shortage of fuel, they don't understand. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. The only thing they know is, are they able to feed their children the way you, they used to feed their children before peer formed government? Mm -hmm. Are they sending their children to school without problems, the way they were sending their children to school before PF formed government? No. How much is the price of sugar today compared to the way it was before PF took over? Those are small things. Not the roads in Lusaka. Because of the, the problems that people are going through this time around, the highest of our, our common people 
are blind to the roads. They are not seeing the roads. They are not seeing those flats they've built for police officers because even police officers are, are complaining. They are crying. And those flats are not for police officers. They are for the government. So you will not be happy to live in a good house which is not yours. Unless if those houses were theirs. Nurses are complaining because the kwacha has lost the value. And yet, this is a, a, a brotherly warning to PF, a caution to say, be careful and alert, be careful, be careful. How can you allow cadres to have more money than teachers who are educated? How can you allow cadres to have more money than doctors who are educated? Do you think teachers are happy when they're able to see cadres flashing money wherever they go? Do you think those who are educated are happy? Do you think they are happy and do you think they'll vote for you when their salaries have not been increased? Do you think they are happy? Do you think they are blind? Do you think they'll vote for you? Why can't you lower the price of sugar? Why can't you lower the price of cooking oil? Do it between today and 12 August. Maybe they can vote for you. Get that money from that 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 money from cadres. Why can't you give it to teachers? Because the reason why teachers went to school is because they wanted a good life. Now they cannot have it. Now they are admiring a cadre who has not gone to school. So now teachers are saying, "Did we make a mistake to go to school?" No, no mistake. Are you getting me, ma'am? Fikapwa, fikapwa. <laughs> this is what is going on in the minds of teachers. So mm -hmm. they are they are annoyed. They are annoyed. They are not happy with our government. So work on those things. Maybe you can win an election. Maybe if you work on those things. Farmers are complaining the fertilizer now is costing 700 kwacha. And yet when we formed government as PF, when I was in PF, fertilizer was 90 kwacha. So instead of putting more money in people's pockets, because in 700 kwacha, a a farmer that time, when we are taking government from MMD through an election, the same amount 700 kwacha was buying eight bags of fertilizer. But now that money is buying one bag. So have you put money, more money in the farmer's pocket or you have taken no. out money taking, from yes. a farmer's pocket? They are taking. Simple arithmetic. Mm -hmm. I'm not very much educated, but you can see that instead of putting more money in people's pockets, you've taken away. Because a person who is supposed to buy eight bags of fertilizer is buying one. Cement was 20 kwacha when we took over government. Today it's 150 kwacha. And this poor teacher want to build a house. So in 150 kwacha, a teacher at that time around was buying something like seven pockets of cement. Today you are buying one pocket of cement. So have you put more money in a teacher's pocket or you have taken away much money from a teacher's pocket? Simple yeah, arithmetic again. Teachers are not happy. Police officers are not happy. Soldiers are not happy because they are human beings. They've got families to, to look after. So you can work on those things. But if you ignore them, you ignore your re-election. And let me campaign for my HH, for President Akainde Ichilem. Yes. 
You see Zambians, you have to learn to gravitate towards people with big brains, regardless of where they are coming from, regardless of their tribes. We should teach our minds to gravitate towards people who can think. So I'm sharing my own language. Making, way. Way. making roads is a good thing. Mm -hmm. But how you make them is another thing. If you build the roads using borrowed money, Magufuri who built roads without borrowing money is more powerful than building roads with borrowed money, which has brought problems on the, on the economy. So if, if we say PF has worked, they've built roads. Even me, I can build roads if I'm elected today as president of Zambia, using borrowed money. Anyone, even you, mama, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Because you are, not, you are not thinking when getting that money, you are just borrowing. But we want people who can think of finding money where there is no money without borrowing. When you do a one kilometer load, you are better than people who have done 4,000 kilometers of roads with borrowed money. At 10 times the cost, you know, the cost yes. is exaggerated. Yes. So doing roads, even me, I can do that. If I'm, if you give me President Lelo, because I'm not using my mother's surety to borrow. I am using the resources of Zambia and the country Zambia as the collateral. So if you do roads, or even if you did the hotel in, in heaven, it is useless. Because you, you, you didn't use your brains to I'm not, I'm not insulting our leaders. I'm saying borrowing, anything can, anyone can do that. But we want people, we want leaders who can think of ways of creating wealth using manganese. Why mm -hmm. can't we use that manganese yes. to build the roads in Serenje, Mukushi, and Kapiri than exactly. borrowing? You, you get the point? Yes, I'm with you, Honorable. Tapping why into we, our local we, resources. Why can't we use the gold in northwestern province mm -hmm. to build the roads than borrowing? Exactly. Because, because borrowing is affecting the economy. You get the point? Very much. So you're saying, I oh, know they've done they've done roads. Even me, I can do it today. Mm -hmm. If I become president, I can borrow also. Even you, ma'am, you can borrow when you become president. You can borrow in the name of Zambia. <laughs> but you know, my son, if, if I borrow, I'm not solving anything. I'm creating more problems. Is it Kalova? Yes, you are creating more problems. Ma'am. Hello? Hello, I'm here. Look, look, look here, mommy. We have, we have two teachers. Huh? It's, this is just an example. Mm -hmm. If we have two teachers, they were employed on the same day, mm -hmm. same salary scale. Then they, they work for 10 years, same salary. Then one builds a house costing 150,000 kwacha using borrowed money. Then the other teacher builds a house costing 150 kwacha using his money he was getting from the salaries. Who is clever between the two? The number two. <laughs> <laughs> because that one used his money. Yes. His money. So if you go to Tanzania, let Magufuri develop Tanzania using the local resources. No wonder Africa is crying because even me, I was, feel, I was feeling like Magufuri was my president. By virtue of being African, 
I was connected because I was amazed at this soul, this man, who can do proper roads, proper bridges, who can do infrastructure in his country without borrowing. And in Zambia, the same thing has happened. They've built roads, hospitals, but the money is borrowed. So who is who? Mwari Zambia wants some Zambia. You, you judge. And now we want to have this, this man called Akayindi, the pride of Zambia, who can do it without borrowing, who can use together with Topson, of course, as member of parliament, Les Angasu Minisha Minister. <laughs> President in future. Yes. President. Yes. Plot yes. one. We have to have a yes. vision. Pantu got a vision. In Gaisanga situation, you won't do anything. You gotta dream big so that you are prepared. When the no opportunity wonder, comes, you know what to do. No wonder, ma'am. If I'll be allowed to campaign in Mukoshi, I will not tell people what I will do with the CDF, Constituents Development Fund, which comes from Lusaka. Mm -hmm. It means the MP is not thinking. You want to develop Mukoshi using CDF, and yet there is manganese in Mukoshi, and yet there is copper in Mukoshi. You are sitting on, on a diamond, gold, manganese. So I'm not that kind of a person or a member of parliament to be who would want to develop Mukushi using CDF. But Mukushi will develop when I become member of parliament and when HH is president. Because we we'll use what God gave us. Because what is happening, ma'am, the manganese which is in Mukushi is developing China. Imagine. Instead of developing Mukushi and Serenji. Nah, but our leader much. doesn't know that our leader's mom doesn't know that manganese is money. The only thing our leaders know that it's money, it's a already printed dollar. That's the only money they know. Not the manganese in the soil. We are you going to allow me to stop from here? Two minutes. <laughs> we'll, con we'll continue next Wednesday, same time. I will talk, we'll just make it weekly so that we can talk weekly or maybe twice a week. We come on for one hour, we talk. I love yes. it because we are able to reach people all over the world. We can talk, you have so much knowledge, you have so much wisdom. And the other thing I love about you, Honorable Thompson, is like you have a history you know the history of Zambian politics. And most of our voters, they are voting this time for the first time. They, they were, when uh, Zambia got independence, they were not yet born. 1991, some of them were babies. So there is a void, they are lacking knowledge. So I want to tap into your brain so that you can educate these young voters, the toddlers. They were in toddlers 1990, some were not born. So I would, I love you to come on this uh, Matomola TV and give information about the young voters so they can have a full picture of the Zambian political scene. Right now, they are just seeing maybe a piece. So you are, with your information, you, we are, you are painting the whole picture of the Zambian political scene. So it's wonderful. I thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Last remark, I said that I am a teacher of financial literacy or the investor lessons. So what it is, is that for someone to become rich, you don't need to be given a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You need to be changed in the mind. The mindset has to, to change. That's why if you follow me closely, you discover that I'm not talking about the money that Akainde will be sending 
as CDF and other monies to develop Mukushi. Because my thinking is different. I think like an investor, though I am poor today, I don't have a car where I am today. I'm a very poor guy. I don't <laughs> but inside, mom, inside, in the head, I'm a very rich person, a very powerful person, because I'm able to see my hand from where I am today. So that is the kind of mindset which we want to inculcate in our youths. Yes. We start seeing money where there is no money. Mm -hmm. And that is the mindset of Aka Inde Ichilema. So I teach financial literacy, which we call investor lessons. So sometimes, because you have a bigger platform, invite me to teach financial literacy so that even our leaders can learn. Because our leaders, those that are in government today, they've made the mistakes they've made because they never did financial literacy. You are right. You're right. They, they, they think by building a bridge, they need to, bo to borrow. Mm -hmm. But there is what we call good debt and bad debt. Borrowing is not bad. Borrowing is good. For as long as what you borrow, the money you borrow, when paying back, the loan should make you more richer than you was before you borrowed. Exactly, exactly, exactly. But if you have not done financial interest, if you borrow money for the roads, the borrowed money when paying back will make you poorer than you was before you borrowed the money. That is exactly. the knowledge every Zambian needs. Exactly, exactly. And I teach that. I teach that. Excellent, excellent. So thank you very much, Honorable Thompson. We this we are going to be on a schedule until August 12th. We pack a plot one. We are going to be on a schedule. We'll, we'll campaign. We'll talk about uh, rural pro problems. We'll talk about financial literacy. We'll talk about uh, all areas. We we'll even discuss, you know, family matters, religious matters. So we are connected from now on until God says no. So Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching. Honor, Honorable Thompson, you can just say bye before I sign off, and then we'll see you next week. Mom, before I say bye, allow me to say this to everyone who is following us. Pray for President Lungu. He's a good man. Pray for President Akainde Ichilema is a good man. If you only you only pray for Akainde Ichilema, you, you, you leave out President Lungu, you are not a Christian. Pray for President Lungu, Ashtasila. Pray for, I don't know why you don't call him Dr. Akainde Ichilema. <laughs> Shalom, shalom. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for following. Thank you for watching. Share this video. Follow Honorable Thompson. Follow Honorable Matomola. I have a YouTube channel too. Follow us. We are here live. We are here to campaign and share information. And we are doing this uh, politically in political correctness. We are not here to insult anyone or to, you know, to be insulted. But we are just here to promote Zambia and to make sure that Zambia makes an, an informed decision on August 12th by providing information that you need to know. And also we'll be here sharing breaking stories, bre any unfolding news we'll be sharing on this platform. I also want to say before I leave that Honorable Matomola was abducted by PF uh, thugs uh, two weeks ago and they delivered him to Kabwata police station. They call this a citizen's arrest for some charges which are available. 
but they are still holding him there. He hasn't been released. So guys, pray for Matomola so that uh, justice, justice will prevail for him. And we pray and uh, for we commit all our police officers because I know they are acting under pressure from PF, but the police, they are supposed to be impartial. They are supposed to provide a service of equality for all citizens. All Zambians are equal before the law. We are all born free and equal, but the Kadarism, the PF Kadarism has brought a lot of hardships to families all over Zambia. And we are just praying. Actually, right now, I'm just asking for our president, the ECL, to just come out and make a public statement against Kadarism. Because the side, the more he keeps quiet on this silence, on this Kadarism, is the, the worse it's getting for all of us in the country. We have seen videos of commanders, and just anarchy, you know, it's very scary. You know, it's very scary to see ordinary citizens or hooligans, you know, misbehaving publicly and there is no repercussions. So we are asking for the PF government to separate themselves from the law enforcement officers, from the judiciary, so they can operate fairly and equally to protect Zambians as we head to this general election. It's very important. It's everyone's right to pick a, a political party of their choice. It's everyone's right to express their opinions. This, uh, you know, this we are seeing of pe people being abducted and attacking and being attacked for oppressing, for expressing their, their opinions is an act of dictatorship, it's tyrant, and it's against the law. So with that, guys, I end here. God bless you, good night. I'll see you in the week. Uh, take care, bye. Thank you, Honorable Thompson, we'll chat later. Okay, I got.